what are you reading that old book for, Marty? Are you thinking open a still somewhere in the Antrim Hills, are you? I don't, Justin, you think you could do better than this. I mean, look at look at the state of that. An old milk turd <laughs> with a bucket, you know? I think you think you could do better than that. And they can. We know a man that's doing better than that. It looks pretty swish, it doesn't does. it? It looks a little bit. It looks a little bit different. Um, we're joined by Joe Devaney from the Crowley Distillery down in County Donegal. Joe, welcome. Gentlemen, how are you? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, I see the Donegal Poaching uh, book. Um, uh, Maiden Manning uh, wrote uh, a comprehensive um, book on uh, okay. the Donegal Poaching making. Uh, it's a thing that I know nothing of. Um, my father, who's still alive, knows nothing of, um, but we are sixth generation watching makers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, the, um, yeah, um, and um, it's um, been 180 years since whiskey was last legally um, produced in Donegal by a man of the name of William Leetham out in Bohillion and Burt. As if you ever take the road from Letterkenny to Derry, you'll see that beautiful red stack um, halfway. Uh, that is the last legal distillery. William Leetham um, made um, very fine whiskey, and um, we um, we hope to continue uh, the um, the style um, and the uh, tradition of uh, making whiskey. So we. Um, we, we being three, uh, Conor McMenamin, Kieran Davis and myself, um, yeah. we have come together and we, for sense or foolish as we don't know <laughs> yet, but um, we have decided to, to um, and we have been underway since 2018, um, but way back in the day, in 2013, we started talking about the revival of Irish whiskey yeah. and considering uh, our position, could we be part of the story? So um, um, we um, approached Uthras, Uthras na Gilthata, um, which is the um, enterprise um, organization uh, for West Nagal. Yeah. And we gave them our notional thought of um, <laughs> if they were to um, renovate what was the former Crawley Doll factory, um, if yeah. they were to renovate that, that we, from our resources, we'd uh, put together a distillery. And here we are. Um, uh, we are um, in production of um, whiskey um, at the rate of 10 casks a week. Um, so they, um, since last September, October time, um, and uh, with the, obviously the few teething problems, um, mostly ironed out now, um, yeah. we believe that we're going to have a very fine product and um, a very fine sipping whiskey in, um, in a short uh, number of years. So you started, the, the plan started back in 2013. Yes. And carried on through that. So, I want to know how many years before that you were actually thinking about it for, Joe. How many years before 2013? It was really about uh, it? after a trip to Isla, um, to, yeah. to the island Isla, to the island of Isla in the Hebrides, uh, that I recognised nice. that there was um, something big um, happening. Um, and... It was driving past the Crawley factory. It just looked like a distillery. Um, the, um, but it certainly was influential, the trip to Isla. And yeah. Isla is the mecca of, um, of whiskey distilleries. It's, it's an island of 3,200 people, um, but has 10 whiskey distilleries. And it pretty much oh, supports a lot of the local yeah. employment. Um, and that's where I, I, I'm, I'm local to Crawley. I'm from Ranafarshire, just over the road. Um, I have um, been involved in the Irish language uh, all of my life, um, and um, it, 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 yes, you see the Crawley factor there. It's, it's, it's a beautiful image. Um, the uh, it's it's all about um, doing good uh, yeah. for the local area. No, well, it's whenever you go to Isla, it is very much a, a, an eye opener when you see this really quite sparse populated very the weather's not great but yeah it's a powerhouse you were there at the same time as I was obviously <laughs> no I've been a couple of times but it is it's a real powerhouse of, of 
Scottish whiskey. I mean, it's a multi billion pound industry, and you have this little rural remote, the, the weather being what they call Drake. You know, it's always it's always sort of raining. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like the spiritual homeland of a multi billion pound industry, you know. So you went to Isla, you came back, you decided, okay, we'll approach this, we'll get the still, we'll have a look at it. Um, how did you how did you get that from the idea to actually starting to put the plan all together to 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 get the vision another step down the road? Well, it it we were lucky uh, in that we happened upon um, a couple of guys that were a few years down the road further ahead uh, of us and um, pretty much copied their copied their format, and the format was. Um, unique to ourselves, um, mm-hmm. I think. Um, we will be the first distillery that has no debt. Um, and that's because we didn't build the building. It's We leased it from um, Udras. Um, we bought the equipment um, from our own resources and um, uniquely. And the equipment came from uh, the cognac region in France, and yeah. what we have bought are um, are uh, that they're really beautiful. I, I don't know if you've got an image that there, but um, we yeah. we do indeed yeah. have an image. This is uh, uh, it's very like, like an Aladdin's cave. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful um, craftsmanship. Um, they um, mm-hmm. they they are ex brandy, nineteen fifty six, um, uh, copper pot stills. So in the in in in, in the furthest. Uh, of, of the copper, uh, you'll see that is the actual still. Um, above my father's head is the pre-warmer, and out yeah. of shot is the condenser. Yeah, and it's um, it's we, we've gone with the direct fired um, it's traditional style. It's a real throwback to the olden days, yeah. um, to have direct fired, and you see what looks like the onion bulb and the line arm. And um, mm-hmm. that there will create huge amounts of reflux and huge amount of uh, contact with the copper. Yeah. And uh, only the purest drop. Um, we strip everything off in that onion bowl, and only the purest drop of alcohol will reach across into the condenser. And it's the, the distillation uh, happens where to distill means to um, to boil to change from liquid to um, uh, to gas and to re, 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 re-bring it. We're re-bringing it back down through the old traditional um, um, tub, um, uh, worm, worm um, condenser. Yeah. And so um, we hope and truly do believe that we will have a very, very pure um, pure uh, liquid. Here's one, here's one I made um, earlier. This, this is um, obviously... Um, it, 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 and obviously, you don't have the benefit of, but um, it, 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 it. Oh, don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that! It is a beautiful, malty, um, sweet, um, um, but very uh, aromatic. And then um, we have. Uh, I'll, nope, nope. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, um, we can see. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And yeah. glass. Yeah. It's, and it's emblazoned with the crawly and uh, the gold rim. So, the gold um, rim. Yeah. Now, so. you started distilling. Now, to be fair, you, you guys have kind of went, there's a few people making really big names and making a lot of noise, but you guys have kind of went a little bit under the radar. Um, was that by choice or by... Oh, very much by design, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we probably want to say that we did it rather than that we're going to do it. Right. Good. Yeah. Uh, Is that because you don't want to give people false hope or false uh, promises? You just want to deliver it and that's it sort of thing? Yeah. Not alone that. Um, we have our tagline. Um, and I don't take away from anybody who's in what other, other space they're in, but we're in the space where if it says Crawley on the bottle, it is Crawley in the bottle. Okay. You can yep. trust uh, the authenticity of the product. Yeah, its Absolutely. traceability will be from from grain to glass, and it's something that we're rather passionate about. 
Um, they um, and we're not doing this uh, terroir. Um, yeah, we we don't really know enough about it. Um, yeah. but we certainly do know that. Uh, and that there um, photograph you just after showing up there is is actually uh, it is the field which our barley is grown in, and mm-hmm. that is William Leakham's uh, farm out in Bohillion, which is oh. where whiskey was last. Uh, um, the last whiskey, um, correct? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very that's good. The, that's the authenticity of the product. Now, you are very much in the, the west coast. Well, whatever you say, the west coast, you're about as, almost about as west as you can sort of get. Uh, the the weather up there must be an influence on what's going to happen as well, in terms of storage and, and maturation. Yeah. Um, they, they, um, there was um, a study done way back, I don't know um, the detail, but um, they replicated the in, a exact uh, distillation process in the south of France as they had in the, the highlands of Scotland, mm-hmm. and the whiskey could taste completely different. Uh, there's no doubt that the Wild Atlantic Way, which probably is on, um, will have an influence. We're yes. sitting right beneath Grogan Mountain, beneath Perigal. Um, we're in. The, um, we're we're going to have um, a, um, a maritime um, climate for maturation. So I do think uh, it will bear influence um, and a very positive influence. I hope. Yes. Now, your master distiller is a man called Mayo. Now, Donegal and Mayo have a have a history. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone, who, for anyone who's not familiar with this, this is to do with uh, the GAA and and uh-huh. and, and uh, sport. But that uh, your master distiller, Dr. Jack Mayo, has a background in astrophysics, which yes. I, quite, I, I I quite like the idea. He must have there's dark skies down in Donegal as well. Uh, as long as our astrophysicist doesn't blow the whole place. <laughs> Create a rocket. <laughs> as long as you're not rocket man. Um, yes, just come back on your uh, to the Gold Mayo connection. My son in law is Mayo, so there's obviously uh, this great um, this great crack uh, at any time that the, the two counties meet. Um, but yes, Dr. Jack Mayo, he is um, uh, an astrophysicist, uh, um, a mass distiller, and has um, brought in massive. Um, um, insight uh, to our team and has uh, directed us along the way and uh, we're certainly very glad to have him. We also have um, um, Julio Diana. Uh, Julio is um, um, Brazilian and um, his background is in brewery, um, just um, the old mill brewery and in um, making cachaça, which is um, um, a type of um, mead drink, uh, in, well consumed in Brazil. Yeah. So yeah, there you right. go. I think I've heard of it before. Actually, me. yeah. Me to me. Uh huh. So how uh, well? I'm not being new to you when you come down to see us. I never, I never come down. Do, do, does he make those lovely sort of things that look like Scotch eggs, but they're actually <laughs> rice balls covered in sort of breadcrumbs and deep fried? The Brazilians do. They're lovely. <laughs> uh, he's actually a, a, an accomplished um, um, cheesemaker. And um, honey, mm. that's uh, there. His crafts. Yeah. Hold my keys. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, no. So you've got you've got an expert team. You've got yeah. a beautiful location. Uh-huh. You've got a unique uh, wood fired or flame fired uh, stills. You, you seem to have a lot of the right ingredients for for uh, people to what people would really like now. You've only just started, so we're, we're going to have to wait years before your products appear, or before your whiskey mm-hmm. appears. But people can buy into it now, can't they? Yes. Um, we are, um, well, we're actually well down the road. And mm-hmm. what the, um, uh, there are a number of um, founder casks that can be pre-purchased. Yeah. Um, we have, um, as a nod to William Leatham, it's 180 years since he uh, last uh, produced whiskey, and um, so we are pre-selling 180 um, casks um, of, of whiskey um, at the very inviting price of 6,600 euros. Um, they, um, they, uh, um, you can put your name on a cask, mm-hmm. and um, 
what it does is it uh, um, it allows our, our business model it, it allows us to, um, to raise uh, capital um, in advance um, of sales yeah. and um, it it's three years from the point of commencement uh, to the point of sale uh, before you can sell a whiskey it's three years and one day um, in Scotland is three years in Ireland is three years and one day. I think that was to better the Scotch. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but uh, they, um, yeah. Uh, so, um, 180 casks um, to be pre-sold, and um, I we're down to the last um, 20 ish. Um, so, if there's anybody out there amongst your audience who would like to um, pursue uh, yeah. that, um, do feel free. Yeah. Um, but at the, uh, not alone are we creating um, a whiskey distillery. Um, we're also capturing and recording um, the socio-economic history of the area. Um, the building has been there since 1901, and what we want to do is tell the previous lives. We're merely the custodians of, yeah. of, of this building, um, um, but it initially was a carpet factory. It was an RIC barracks. Um, um, it was um, the famous Crawley Dolls factory, mm-hmm. and um, it has created a lot of employment, a lot of um, stories around the place, and uh, we want to tell that history uh, to the future generations. Now, you're in the Gaeltacht region, you know, the, the, for anyone outside of Ireland who doesn't know what that is, it's region in Ireland that promotes the Irish Gaelic language. I take it that's going to be a feature, a fairly heavy feature in, in the the distillery, the visitors area of it, I would say. Kinche, Candelica, and Usage Gafol, Goliger, Siantor. It's a, a, mostly a, an Irish language speaking area. Mm-hmm. And um, we um, uh, we want to acknowledge um, the language. And yeah. uh, it, when you do come and see us, uh, you'll notice that all of the um, all of the signage, all of the story, Tagakrut, Chigelika, everything is through Irish um, and um, bilingual. Uh, but yeah, we have a, a, it's an important um, part of our heritage which we want to record. Good, so it should be. Now, you say you're making 10 barrels a week, so your production figures aren't going to be massive. You know, we're not, we're not going to expect massive volumes, obviously. Uh, so you're going to rely on visitors. You're going to have to, there's going to be visitors is going to play a huge part in the, in the story of this. Now, what's your visitor center going to be like? And can we arrive in on the airport down in Carrick Finn and come near you? Because that's beautiful. Don't be telling people so I've got a Everybody jet, knows you get, your playboy, the playboy jet that parked outside Carrick. Carrick um, Fergus, not Carrick Finn. Uh, well, would you believe we do have a private yet, um, <laughs> which is a, 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 an, um, a Cessna 120, uh, 1937 uh, heritage um, two-seater, which um, Julio, um, our Brazilian uh, guy, um, regularly flies. And um, when you do come into Carrickfin, you will be able to see our Crawley emblazoned um, heritage uh, vintage uh, two-seater. And for those select few that... Um, Want to have a on a risk going off uh, up in the air? Uh, 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 more than welcome. Um, Carrick Finn has to be mentioned uh, as the um, the most scenic, most beautiful airport in the world. It's got that title, and uh, rightly so, because you're coming in over Golan Touring, uh, coming into Carrick Finn. There, it's just absolutely beautiful. We're very proud, obviously, uh, of um, of where we come from. Um, West of the Gaul is beautiful, and and um, I think that the visitor centre that you draw attention to, the um, it will be a celebration of the music, of the dance, of the storytelling, of all of what the area has to offer. And I think the liquid, the amber gold, and I see you've just thrown up the Crawley bottle uh, and the glass. And on, on the Crawley River, the waterfall, the clock volume and chunny, everything the area has to offer. Um, we want to and capture and um, give that experience through the business centre. 
Yes, we will be totally reliant on many visitors coming and our product is, um, we're going to produce 50,000 litres of pure alcohol, LPAs as it's called, Mm -hmm. um, uh, per annum, um, which is small, it's scarce, it's rare, Mm -hmm. um, but we do believe it will be very well sought after, it will be very credible, Um, it'll be um, a a thing that we want to be proud of, and the amber liquid gold um, will be there for sipping and for telling many stories, which ties to the area. Which is what whiskey's for. And I keep trying yes. to tell Justin this. It's not for Justin to get drunk and start making bother for people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, yeah. I want to ask you more about these these okay. stills because I, I've yeah. got a better picture of the stills there. That sort of shows it. How does how does this still differ okay. from other stills there? Um, Talk us through. Well, what's not in the frame there um, is all of the brew house. What you're looking at in the, that picture there is the distillation area, okay? So, um, but um, we've, prior to coming over to the copper pots, we'll have made our beer. So our beer is at 8 to 9%. And um, it's not a, a, a very drinkable beer because it doesn't have hops. But we're not yeah. finishing um, with that product, where what we're doing now is we're coming over to the middle, middle the pre warmer, and we're then dropping down into the still. And all we're doing, all of the beer is made, um, all of the whiskey is made in the brew house. All we're doing in this process here is extracting the water, and um, water um, boils at 100 degrees, alcohol boils at 78 degrees. So Prior to coming to boil point, our alcohol is rising through that line arm, and uh, okay. yeah, so the uh, and all that's left behind is the water. So all we're doing is condensing down and condensing down twice. You see that we have mm-hmm. uh, the front still and then the back still. By the time it comes to the back still, we're looking at sixty three point nine percent alcohol. Um, so the um, unfortunately, I, I should have sent through a few more photographs uh, to allow you to see the full process but um, when you're coming visit us i'll talk you through it you can do your video and do your we can, oh we'll get once once we get out of the covid madness me and justin will take a run down and we'll get julio to pack us up in the plane listen i'm only coming because i want one of these things i want one <laughs> of these look at that there yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, 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 where would you get that where, where else would you get that that's fantastic it's it's probably worth more than a bottle of uh, whiskey actually some of them probably are now if if our if our uh, whiskey is as successful as the crawley doll um and and making her journey around the globe we'll be very very happy um yeah. because the, the wee crawley doll is all they around are. the world they are they are indeed Joe, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm glad that we've moved on from this. <laughs> it's done it all. Um, well, and, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, and uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Listen, take care, and thanks very much. Gary Kidney, Mike, Slant. Slant. I'm going to slant it. <laughs>